got let go of ESPN with the contract situation that I had at ESPN. Had I not let been let go of ESPN at that time, it would not have opened the door for me to be able to come here to LA where I've had the 10 best years of my professional life. Y'all, this is the inflection collective. All of us are connected, reflective, real life perspective, respected. The banter, the chit chat, no cap, it's big facts, so kick back. This year is done there, been there. And speaking of excellence, uh, a team that, and this is another fan base that's out there, and I got to give it up yeah. for the Detroit Lions fans. Because Detroit Lions fans, through thick and thin, through the negative times, and they had a lot of negative times. They've been some diehard, bona fide fans. And to be a Detroit Lions fan today, we know you've been through it. You've been through it. Shit. You've been through it. And now they are finally here. They are one win away. Can you believe this? One win away from the Super Bowl after knocking off Tampa Bay at home. They've won two playoff games for the first time in, what, 66 years, Eunice. They're in the NFC Championship game for the first time since 1991. It is amazing to see what they've been able to do. One win away. And then Baltimore's also one win away from going to the Super Bowl. So can you imagine how black Vegas will be if Detroit and Baltimore <laughs> – Get to the Super Bowl. We're going to see some now later gators, some black fur coats. It's going to be some cognac. It's going to be some cigar smoking and some other kind of smoking. It's going to be a lot of blackness in Vegas if Detroit and Baltimore get to the Super Bowl on Super Bowl Sunday on February 11th. But shout out once again to the Detroit Lions yeah. for getting there Congrats. and Jerry Goff. Yeah. Absolutely. You know what? So it's, it's interesting because uh, when you talk about the AFC championship game or even the AFC championship game, I actually have very fond memories mm -hmm. of that particular weekend because when I was with the Titans, that was the Music City miracle that yeah, I was there. got us to the AFC championship game. And, and when I just think of the, that, you know, championship weekend leading up to the Super Bowl, I probably have fonder mem memories of that than the Super Bowl because we did go to the Super Bowl and lose. So mm -hmm. I probably have a higher... Uh, affinity but also i am one of the few people in the world who has a game ball Ooh. from the afc championship game really the team gifted me with an afc championship game ball they play jacksonville i'm sure, in the I'm, AFC sure championship. I'm sure I'm a wonderful that. producer have already shown y'all that picture by now by the time i've said that it's on the screen yeah, yeah it'll be up on the screen they do a great <laughs> job of doing that when they yeah, it's one of my prized right possessions now. is my AFC but you know what i was there i was there for the tennessee titans that year uh covering the team yeah. that was my last year in tennessee going let's to the go Super back Bowl. to that mike was in nashville Doing sports when I was doing in sports. Nashville, working for the Titans, yeah. For the Titans, and that's the first time I actually met you, even though I had heard about you or whatnot, I knew your sister or whatever. First time I met you, Tony Wiley introduced us. You was working for the Tennessee mm -hmm. Titans. I was that first year actually being the Tennessee Titans. They had changed uniforms and everything. They used to be the Tennessee Oilers. So that's going to be incredible. And and I remember the Music City Miracle. Shout out to Frank Wycheck, who just passed away, as a matter of fact, a couple of months also ago. Also, Steve McNair, who we don't have Steve anymore. Steve McNair, who we don't have anymore. Yep, all those guys, part of that team, whatnot. Eddie George, who just had hip surgery uh, at Tennessee State or whatever. So they had a phenomenal team. That was great memories. But it was good to see them actually do that. And nobody really expected it out of that team that year, just like nobody expected it out of Detroit Lions. Like, are there things in life that we look back on like we just never – like having a black president – I never expected <laughs> to have a black president in my lifetime and then to have a black president followed up by a reality show president. Never expected that <laughs> in my lifetime. I used to do a joke about that. I used to say that when Barack Obama got elected president, you were like, wow, anybody could be president. And even though Hillary didn't win, but she got the nomination, it was like, wow, anybody could be president. And then when Donald Trump won the election, it was like, Wait, so anybody can be president? <laughs> so anybody, <laughs> your dreams so can't come true. Yep, you tell your kids at a young age, your dreams can't come true, man. But it's it's amazing. What I like about the Detroit Lions is like uh, they they've been underdog for so long. They've had this, like you said, this 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 fan base that's been long suffering. But they also have a quarterback over there, uh, Jared Goff, who I shout out to, man. This guy led the Rams to a Super Bowl a couple of years ago. And then was told basically he wasn't good enough. He was pretty much thrown away. He was traded for Matthew Stafford, who led the Rams to a Super Bowl. When he was traded, it looked like it was a bad trade at the time. But all Jared Goff has done when nobody believed in him is that he believed in himself. And I love that as a narrative for everybody's life because I think we've all been there. We talked about done there, been that. We've yeah. all been there before where somebody said, hey, you know what? For whatever reason, 
we don't necessarily think you're a fit here anymore or you're not good enough, so we're going to move on. And a lot of times that can devastate you. I've been there plenty of times in my career, but what I've been able to do and learn to use it as fuel to not necessarily get bitter or whatever, and you get that, you know, that, that, that bitterness you get in your feelings sometimes, but at the same time, you use it as fuel to move on to show them and to show yourself that you do belong. And that no matter what they felt about you, somebody's going to appreciate what you bring to the table and give you the right platform and give you the right type of uh, identity for yourself so that you can move on to be the best person that you can possibly be in your profession. And, you know, I mentioned we are high performing people, but that means we've had a lot of rejection. Yep, <laughs> that absolutely. Means we've had some big failures, some big missteps. I have had to take the mindset and I learned this many, many, many years ago. There was a job at Nike, actually, in public relations that I wanted so badly. This is 20 something years ago. And I applied and had like the first interview. And I mean, I just knew this was it. And when I did not get that job, I was literally devastated. Mm. But I saw something around that time that helped me turn around my devastation at rejection or redirection. Um, and it was um, that means it's something bigger and better for me. So yes. let me not mourn what I didn't get. Let me get excited and be ready for what I couldn't even dream. What could have been better than that? And I would say that I have not, I don't think that's not the job that got away. You know, I don't ever think about that time and say, man, I wonder what would have happened. <laughs> what I ended up doing instead in its totality, because I ended up doing a thousand other different things. I'm like, okay, that's how that was supposed to go. Being out here in Los Angeles, submitting for roles and auditioning and even trying to get representation, all these things where people are like, eh, well, eh. and you, and yeah, it does motivate you to say, Oh, you going to eat your words. Ooh, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know, but you know what, but it's also like, Hey, well then that was not for me then I'm going to keep it moving and, and be ready for what's even better. Exactly. And sometimes God, we, you know, I believe in God, even though I don't act like it sometimes. I believe in God. I have a good spiritual base. I do. I really do. Look now. <laughs> he know the, sure know. Yeah, know the word. I know the word. I know the Lord loves me and I love the Lord. I do. I really do. But you want to go places and you want to be places where you're appreciated and not necessarily tolerated. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't want to be somewhere where they don't necessarily believe in you. You want them to believe in you as much as you believe in yourself. And you should have a high mm -hmm. belief in yourself. I'll tell you the story about when I was in Dallas and got fired in Dallas. Best thing that ever happened to me in my career. Because had I not been fired in Dallas, I would have been content with being a local sportscaster on the weekends okay. for a guy who really didn't appreciate me. Had I not gotten fired in Dallas and gone through what I went through, it would have never opened up the door for me to go to ESPN, which catapulted my entire career. When I got let go at ESPN with the contract situation that I had at ESPN, had I not let, been let go at ESPN at that time, it would not have opened the door for me to be able to come here to L.A. where I've had the 10 best years of my professional life since I have been there. So sometimes when you have been rejected, you think, if, you think of it as a burden. But a lot of times I always say this, your burdens always turn out to be blessings if you use the lessons that you learn in that rejection the right way that will help you move forward in your life to be the best person that you can possibly be in your professional and your personal life. And it has definitely helped me. So shout out to Jared Goff once again for taking that. And not only just being. And shout out to everybody who fired Mike Hill. Cause he just gave us a list. <laughs> hey man, hey, no, fire me again. I want somebody else to fire me. Like, here's the thing. Well, like, even, fired Mike Hill. <laughs> and, 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 and no, it's, seriously, you know, but you know, what's, what's crazy, what's crazy about that is when I was in Dallas, the guy that fired me, and you know, I'm not gonna say his name or whatever, but we went through a lot. It's in my book and open mic. It was a lot of racial stuff that was going on and all that type of stuff, which I've dealt with in my entire career. I understand that. But he told me something that resonated with me. The best thing he told me he said, Mike, your your career is not gonna get started until you get until you get fired. When you get fired, that's when your career starts. And that actually I look at that and I think about that right now and I'm like, you know what? He was absolutely right because once again, a lot of times, Eunice, you know this, we get super comfortable being in an environment which we don't belong in, but because it's our job, because it's like it's a steady income, because, okay, the people treat you fairly for the most part. You just kind of stick in it. You don't even think about what might be coming up next. I mean, or we have ambition. That everybody else thinks you're having a great time. I call it the golden handcuffs. You're stuck. Mm -hmm. You're yep. a prisoner, but they're gold, right? Now, I will say, I've never been fired, but <laughs> I am very good about quitting. Before yeah. <laughs> right, right. I am very proactive. I'm like, you know what? This is the third write-up. I'm about to go. 
<laughs> there you go. There you go. But it's, but still, that's the motivation, right? When you yeah. already see the writing on the wall or whatever, there's that motivation for you to move forward and say, you know what? Hey, before you let me go, let me get the hell yeah. up out of here. And, so and it's also, this- you know, for me, it's like when I am being challenged at, a, let's say, an employment opportunity. When it starts with that writing on the wall, at that moment, it's not even that I'm going to quit because I think you're going to fire me. I'm offended because I know who I am and what I bring to the table. So yes. whatever this is can't be based in in truth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yep. I'm offended that y'all trying to act like I'm not coming in here doing an amazing job. You know right. what I'm saying? But I will, mm. I do want to say for the record, I've never been fired. I do. Well, well now, hopefully I have, you never get. I have gotten hella knows. I've had a lot of auditions, <laughs> and I have gotten hella knows, hella knows. Yep. Yep. You're not fired. 